Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. In today's episode, we are going to be crushing some more hard and challenging geometry problems that I got some from some real SAT test. I want to show you how easy even the hard problems can be. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, as always, feel free to pause the video, solve the problem for yourself before you watch my solution. Let's get going. What's this first problem say? Line L goes through points P and Q, whose coordinates are 0, 1, and B0, respectively. For which of the following values of B is the slope of line L greater than negative 1 over 2? Okay, so we have a straight line. So we're, we're wanting to know for what values of B is the slope of line L greater than negative 1 half. So the slope of a line is just the change in Y over the change in X. And we want our slope to be greater than negative one half. Okay, so this is how we should set up our problem. Uh, the change in y is one minus zero, which is just one. And the change in x is zero minus b, so over negative b. So one over negative b must be greater than negative one half. So now we can multiply by negative 1, cancel these negative signs, and whenever you uh, multiply through by negative 1 on both sides, you need to remember to flip your sign, flip your alligator mouth going the other way. So we are left with 1 over b is less than 1 half, and then again we're solving for b, so now we need to reciprocate our fraction. Again, whenever we reciprocate our fraction, we are going to be flipping our inequality, so we are left with b must be greater than 2. Uh, we're looking at our answer choices. The only one where b is larger than 2 is choice e, 5 halves. All right, so our answer here is e, 5 halves. Uh, another thing I would say about this problem is even if you're not sure how to set it up or how to solve, uh, and if you were to totally guess, I would hope that you would either guess A or E. Uh, just because this problem is asking for something that is greater than negative one half for what values are slope. And so our answer needs to be one of the extremes. So negative, so a half and five halves are the extremes. So these are the two I would be choosing between if it was a blind guess. Of course, this is how you solve the problem. And our answer is E, 5 halves. Let's see our next problem. What is it? Figure is not drawn to scale. <laughs> the figure is never drawn to scale. Okay, what's the problem? In the figure above, A is between 3 and 5, and B is between 6 and 8. Which of the following represents all possible values of C? Okay, so this problem is testing us on the triangle inequality theorem or property. So, and what does this theorem say? It, it basically says the two shorter sides of the triangle, uh, the two shorter sides, need to sum and be greater than the larger side. So this is the math we need to know. This is what this question is testing us on. And now that we know this, now that we have this written down, what are our, possible, what are our possibilities for C? Well, C, C could either be larger than B or smaller than B. Uh, but B is, as we've already said, B is always larger than A. So we could either have A plus C, which is going to have to be greater than B, or we could have A plus B, which is going to have to be larger than C. So these are our two possibilities. These are our two extremes. Uh, this first case will be for if C for a small value c, and the second case would be for a large value c. So if we're looking for the smallest possible value for c, then let's give the smallest possible value to b. So we'll let b be 6. So we have a plus c is greater than 6. And let's give the greatest possible value 5 to a. So we have 5 plus what c 
needs to be greater than 6. So C in this case will be 1. C will be 1. So we can mark out A, C, and E. We're left between B and D right now. And what can we do for our extreme, our larger case? Well, we want C to be as large as possible. So if C is as large as possible, then let's make A and B be the largest possible values they can be. So we'll let A be 5 again, and we'll let B be 8. And so C must be 13, must be the upper bound. So our answer for this question is D. All right, excellent, excellent. So this problem, again, it was just testing us on this triangle inequality theorem, which is, if you're not familiar, the two shorter sides of a triangle must sum to be larger than the third larger side of the triangle. Okay, let's see our next problem. Clear our board. In the figure above, AB equals 6 and BC equals 8. What is the area of this triangle? Okay, so how do we find the area of a triangle? Area of a triangle is simply base times height divided by 2. And so let's drop, so we can either use 6 or 8 as our base. We have this nice 60 degrees here, so let's drop a perpendicular line. So I'll be, so let's drop it here. I'm making a, a nice right triangle. So this is, of course, a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And this is definitely something you need to be knowing if you're, ta if you're taking the SAT. A 30, 60, 90 triangle's values have values of x across from 30 degrees, 2x across from the 90 degrees, and uh, x square root 3 across from the 60 degrees. So th that makes this value here. This is across from the 30 degrees, so this value is 3. And across from the 60 degrees, we have 3 square root 3. Now that we have a base in our height, we see that 8 is our base. Our height is what? Our height is 3 square root 3. And then we need to divide by 2. The 8 cancels with the 2, we're left with a 4, and our final answer is 12 square root 3. So our answer here is B, 12 square root 3. Excellent. Let's see this last problem. In the xy plane, the lines y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals x plus c intersect at point P, where c is a positive number. Portions of these lines are shown in the figure above or in this case to the left. If the value of c is between 1 and 2, what is one possible value of the x-coordinate of p? Okay, so we have two lines that intersect at point p. The way to find an intersection is to, of course, set our lines equal to each other. So we have x plus c equals 2x minus 1. And now what do we do? Well, we're told that c is between 1 and 2. So let's just go right in the middle, let's say 1.5. So we have x plus 3 halves, or 1.5, equals 2x minus 1. Let's simplify and solve. If we add 1 to both sides, we'll have 5 halves. And then if we subtract x from both sides, we have 5 halves equals x. So this 5 halves is a possible value for x. It looks like if you were to work out all possible values of x, you would get anything between uh, 2 and 3. But this question is just asking for one possible value, so 5 halves is a totally valid answer. All right, guys, here was some more tough geometry problems. And if you're looking at me going, Griffin, these problems were super easy. Well, then, excellent. That means you're definitely on your way to getting a perfect score on your math section of your SAT. So congratulations. Uh, if you thought these were a little bit challenging, continue watching. Watch some more videos. Let's see how we solve problems. If I have anything to suggest, it's just know how to set up the problem in the very beginning. 
After that, the math should just fall out of the sky and give you the answer. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. And until next time, take care.